beauties, welcome to my channel, HI Beauty by Yulia. I'm Yulia and I'm your virtual beauty therapist. I have been wanting to be alive for the past 11 years. So skincare is my passion, beauty is my job. I love to do everything related to it. You can find me and follow me in social media, in TikTok and Instagram for much more beauty content. And of course, if you subscribe to this channel, it will be very much appreciated. Now the video today is all about ginseng as the skincare ingredient. And the reason why I decided to do this video is because you will see a lot of K-beauty but not only brands which are using this as highlighted ingredients. And because I can see a lot in the West brands now coming up with this type of product, I started to wonder where the advertisement is going further than the scientific proof. So if you are curious, just like I was, what actually ginseng can do for your skin, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you just want to know about two recommended products, you can skip to the last part of it. The first recorded use of ginseng is from 196 AD in China, and since then it really has been a staple into the Eastern traditional medicine. It has been used to treat conditions like diabetes, it is considered to be aphrodisiac as well, you will find it into different dishes, you will find it as a medicine, you will find it as a skincare ingredient as well. It has been used to treat everything from uh, sores and boils to irritated skin, lines, wrinkles, whitening ingredients. To be fair, from the point of view of uh, really scientific researches, we are relatively new to this ingredient despite the fact that it has centuries of use and it all started actually in the 40s in the Soviet Union because they started looking into adaptogens and yes ginseng is one of them so we have some studies from the last maybe 20 years which are a bit more substantial from the point of view of what are the benefits of use of ginseng onto the skin where we have studies and trials and etc but that doesn't mean that the ingredient is not working. It means that actually we're quite new into looking how it is working. Looking into the available information online, I have to admit that it was very confusing to see who is talking about what. First, you have a lot of brands and manufacturers which are talking about ginseng as a general term and as an extract. But within itself, there's a lot of different species. And then from those species also, there's like a common name and interchangeable use of terminology, which makes it very difficult to understand who is talking about what. And then you have brands which are highlighting that have red ginseng, but what does mean red ginseng? So if you're wondering, like I was, what are the different types of ginseng, this is the part that you want to know about. Ginseng contains of very many substances and there's a variables into the different types of species. So there's around 200 found so far substances into the Korean ginseng and around 100 into the American one. From them you will see a many different brands talking about ginsenocytes. Now ginsenocytes these are compounds which are very specific for this plants and there's almost 40 into the Korean one and around 18 i believe that were found into the american one so there is a lot of variables depending on the processing of the plant and the different species <music> on most of the labels advertisements into articles you will see the name panax ginseng pan comes from greek and it means all oh, aquos means healing so this is, um, I want to say, umbrella term. It doesn't mean just one type of ginseng or ginger. It's actually a few different. Usually for Panax ginseng, we are thinking about Chinese, Korean, and American ginseng. Think to skincare and the one that you will find quite a bit. There's probably four of them. So the first one is the red Korean ginseng. And this is the gold standard. This is the best that you can find. This is what uh, you think about warming effect. You will find it into a lot of the skincare. Then you have the American one. 
Now, it is considered to be kind of half of the potency of the Peruvian, although it is also part of the, remember, the umbrella term of an exchange thing. So you won't see it that much into skincare, but still it is there. Then you have two different types of ginseng, which are actually not a ginseng. <laughs> and the first one is the Siberian ginseng. It actually doesn't even contain the ginsenocytes. And then you have the Indian ginseng, which is actually ashwagandha. And it has very long history and a lot of benefits, but it is not ginseng, although it does work in a quite similar way. If you think that this is all you want to know about the various types of ginseng, you want to So you have a fresh one. These are the plants which are younger than four years. They require minimal processing and very often you will see them into your dish. However, you will see them into skincare as well. Then you have white ginseng. Now these are the plants which are four to six years old, they are peeled, they are air dried and some bleach and that's why their color is white and usually they are the one that you will find into different medication and in different supplements. Red ginseng is considered to be a luxurious type of ingredient. This is a root that is six years old, it has been steamed at 100 degrees and it has not been peeled. So this is the type of processing that you will get and usually it is used into powders and into skincare. You do also have black ginseng. This is a type of red and white ginseng which actually goes further processing of the drying and steaming in order to get this black color. And this is usually used into supplements and more often into tea. <music> Ginseng is considered to be an ingredient which is suitable for all skin types. With that being said, I do have to say, as someone with sensitive threatens prone skin, that I'm not really sure that this is the best choice of ingredient for the warmer months for people like myself who are prone to redness and rosacea. In higher concentration, this ingredient has a little bit warming type of effect onto the skin so it improves the blood circulation and you can feel some kind of heating onto the skin which actually is going to trigger flushes despite the fact that we consider this ingredients for anti-inflammatory so bear in mind if your skin is very sensitive very redness prone that it might not be the best choice for the summer no doubt you will see a lot of claims related to your ginseng product but let's see what actually science is saying about the benefits from the use of it. So let's start with the anti-inflammatory ingredient. Is it really one of those? So usually when we are looking into fluid retention, we consider that the improving of the blood circulation is actually capable of reducing puffiness and reducing inflammation. So from this point, maybe, Ginseng is working as anti-inflammatory ingredient. However, I have to mention that the studies that I found, I did found a few of them, but they were looking into oral supplements of ginseng and not about skincare. So we kind of think that because it is working that way, maybe it is working the same way for our skin. Then there was a study which were looking into wild ginseng extract and one which has been actually used as a fermented ingredient. And the fact was that there was some improvement into free radical scavenging, so the ingredient was considered to be antioxidant, and also the inflammation was reduced. And actually the fact was that it seems that fermentation was actually able to strengthen those type of benefits and the potency that the ginseng actually has. On its own before it was treated with some kind of bacterias. Now most of the ginseng products that you will find will talk about either brightening, whitening or anti-aging. I did saw some that are talking about a better moisture retention so it's a moisturizing ingredient. Um, I saw some that were talking about a sebum control 
reduce oil production. Now for those one, I did not see any type of studies that is kind of agreeing with them. But let's talk about the anti-aging vines. According to some scientists, because we have the boost of blood circulation, this might be capable of also boosting the production of collagen type 1, which is going to improve the elasticity and reduce the lines and wrinkles. According to other, because it is antioxidant, it is much likely to reduce the breakage of collagen and therefore be anti-aging care rather than boosting the collagen production. So the mechanism of working as anti-aging care is quite uncertain. I did saw quite a few different articles and you know people that were mentioning a study from 2015 that was testing ginseng extract around the eye area. So after the use of um, this type of gel, the people actually saw reduction of the roughness of the skin, reduction of um, lines and wrinkles, smoother skin, and etc. But what many of those are actually missing to point out is the fact that we are looking into, yes, great study, but only 23, 23% time. To be fair, the ones that are looking into the widening, brightening, melasma, pigmentation treatments, these are a very tricky one because we need something that is going to make your body react less, produce less melanin, usually it is related with the rosinase. And for the ginseng, while we do have studies, once again, 90% of the participants saw that it was whitening on the skin, but were 25 participants and that's so, all, and it is self-observation after some type of prolonged use of gel. So it is not very well controlled, it is not a huge study. The scientific proof is not very substantial, the studies are not very big, the research is very, very minimalistic. We don't know the, the mechanism, the way that actually step by step this type of ingredient is capable of affecting our skin. So we kind of think that it is antioxidant, we kind of think it's a great brightening ingredient, kind of think that it is um, anti-aging ingredient and kind of think that it's great anti-inflammatory ingredient therefore kind of it is good for everyone in the same time don't know if you know why <laughs> the first product that i wanted to recommend today is amprom and it is their ginseng eye cream now this comes in a 30 milliliters of jar and it doesn't come with a spatula, it is mine. You can see the demo. Highlighted ingredients are three rare types of ginseng. So you have white, red and wood cultivated. The red ginseng is the most highlighted ingredient. As already mentioned, this is the best type, the best quality, the gold standard of ginseng. And in this product, it is 3.55%. Now, when someone says rare from one point, it means that the price goes up. And also, it kind of makes me wonder if it's fair, is it really a great idea to be into skincare? Otherwise, here as ingredients, you will find also shea butter. There's a few different types of uh, hyaluronic acid. There's the denosine. For me personally, it is more for a drier type of skin because it kind of leaves a very gentle film which makes the skin slightly glowy, slightly moisturized better and despite the fact that it is eye cream, it can be used all over the face so I use it around my eyes and then kind of I go all over my forehead lines this is the Revive Serum, it contains 63% of ginseng water along with 3% of snail you also find here licorice which is antioxidant and below the 1%, uh, you will find centella, mushrooms, adenosine, a few types of hyaluronic acid. So for me, this is a very light type of product. It applies very nicely onto the skin. I have seen plumbing. I have seen reduction of lines. I actually have seen some smoothness of the skin. It is affordable. It comes with a dropper. You need three, four drops and that's all necessary for all over the face. So this is going to last for quite a while. It combines very nicely with their SPF as well. I'm 
to say I very much like it. Not the new one? Yes. This is recommended for the plot again. Ginseng is an ingredient which is coming more and more into the Western skincare as well. And a lot of brands and advertisements can be quite ruthless and misleading in my personal opinion. So if you kind of know what ingredient can do for you, it will be much easier for you for me personally to sort out what is the truth and what is just advertisement. So I don't know. What do you think? Do you think you enjoy using ginseng? Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, please give a thumbs up, comment below. Of course, subscribe to the channel. It will be very much appreciated. You can find me and follow me on social media in Instagram and TikTok for much more beauty content. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Thank you.